Hey guys, Buffy Game Bet today bringing another video, and today we're going into part five of our Modern Warfare 2 coming out here in 2022. Our Modern Warfare 2 weapon wish list. We're going to be covering shotguns and pistols today, so we'll probably end up having one more part here for part six for launchers and other miscellaneous weapons that I may have missed along the way. Then we're going to jump into operators and bundles like that for milsim operators, different bundles that could be packaged with different factions for different countries, things like that. Since we do have two years of support, I think there's a lot of possibilities here. So I'm just gonna kind of outline a lot of that going forward as well, such as certain faction packs for maybe China, Ukraine, Russia, Australia. You could have different armies with different faction packs with different weapons that come in, as well as operators, two or three operators with a few different weapons. Things like that would be pretty cool to see. So we'll be going into that for a different series here coming up for our Modern Warfare 2 wishlist. But in the meantime, we'll jump into part five. I will link parts one through four down below in the description where we went through assault rifles, light machine guns, sniper rifles, and DMRs, as well as SMGs for parts one through four. And here for part five, we'll start out with shotguns. So just really quick before we jump into this, preface this by saying if you haven't seen any other parts, you definitely want to go into it, especially part one where I outline kind of how this would work as far as weapon selection. We're going into different weapons and attachments similar to a point system from Insurgency Sandstorm. If we're looking at balance purposes for gameplay, weapons, specifically shotguns, are very hard to balance. So how do we balance shotguns? If you have these semi-automatic or fully automatic shotguns even, based on their performance, they should cost more points in order to equip in your class. And then high-end attachments should also cost more points. So therefore, you're spending points to build up a fully kitted weapon. You're able to do that, but you're also taking away points that would otherwise be used for different perks, sidearms things like that so you have a checks and balances type system and then if there's different attachments or weapons that are very uh i guess bugged or overpowered the developers can simply raise that point gap until it's fixed so that's one thing to keep in mind here as we go into this so jump into the first one here going to be a shotgun that being the russian saga 12 so the saga 12 is a shotgun i don't know if we've actually seen this in any previous call of duty I know we have seen it in Battlefield games in the past, but the Saga 12 is kind of the counterpart to the AA-12 or the Jacques 12 from Modern Warfare 2019. The Saga 12 is, in fact, a fully automatic Russian shotgun. And again, it is very, very aesthetically pleasing. You can attach the same type of Zeneco attachments to this weapon. It takes different magazine attachments from, I believe, a 12, 20 all the way up to a 30 round detachable drum magazine. So we did see some shotguns similar to this in Modern Warfare 2019, but not the Saiga. So the Saiga would be really cool as well as different attachments to deck it out with Zeneco handguards, grips, and optics and different butt stocks, things like that, as well as that 30 round drum would be uh, very cool to see for a shotgun. That firing 12 gauge or 20 gauge or even 410. So that's a really interesting shotgun. Again, a very popular shotgun being the Russian Saiga 12. Next up, we're gonna move to the Benelli M4. So the, also known as the M1014. This is a semi-automatic shotgun, most recognizable from the John Wick movies, I believe. But again, this is one of those shotguns, I wanna say we've seen it in the original Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is when we saw this one, I believe. This is a shotgun that I think only made an appearance in that game. Correct me if I'm wrong down below. But again, a good semi-automatic shotgun here would have a good place in the game as well. And again, it is a nice looking shotgun. Semi-automatic can definitely have some good customization options. However, when we get into fully automatic and semi-automatic shotguns, they need to be balanced properly and obviously very perform very well at close range or have a good damage drop off outside of a specific range. So the Benelli M4, as well as the Saga, that being semi and fully automatic, should be balanced properly. And I think a good reference point to this would be Battlefield 3, I think did a decent job of balancing shotguns in retrospect, or even Battlefield 4. So hopefully Call of Duty can find the, I guess the even ground or the, the, that sweet spot for shotgun balance. Next up, we're going to move on to the AA-12. So we did see this one in previous Call of Duty games. I believe it made an appearance in the original Modern Warfare 2. We saw it in Modern Warfare 2019, and hopefully we'll see it here in Modern Warfare 2, that being the AA-12. This is a fully automatic shotgun. Again, very interesting design. Does take uh, that eight-round magazine as well as 20 and 32-round drum magazines. So we would have essentially all the same attachments that we saw in Modern Warfare 2019. 
However, maybe you would want to hold off on some of the uh, longer handguards for range, things like that. But again, very interesting weapon. I think this is one of those ones similar to the Saga you need to balance correctly, but it should have a decent uh, decent usage. And again, I, I point back to Battlefield 3 just because I remember, obviously, some shotguns were very OP, but they did do a decent job of balancing in that game for the spread of the shotguns and the damage at range as well. So let me know what you guys think of that. AA-12 make a, a reappearance here in Modern Warfare 2 2020. Two, let's hope so. Moving on, next we're going to have the Model 870 MCS, or the uh, Modular Combat System. So this this shotgun, again, I don't believe, or maybe I can't remember if it has been in a Battlefield game in the past, but again, this is one of those ones, or excuse me, a Call of Duty game. We have seen it in Battlefield games, but the Model 870 MCS is a pump-action shotgun, so this would be an interesting I guess balance option here to have a pump action shotgun versus all the semis and full autos that we went over But again, this is a, a weapon that I think It definitely has a, a place here in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 We've seen it in a lot of games and nothing really special about this other than the fact that uh, It is a staple for FPS games and I believe I, I'm wrong. This was actually obviously in Modern Warfare 2019 So again, this would be another returning weapon for this game as well Next up, we'll go with the Spaz-12. So this is a, a weapon that was not in Modern Warfare 2019, but was in Black Ops Cold War. Spaz-12, again, is one of those semi-automatic shotguns. Very recognizable design. Uh, has its place in cinema history for sure. Again, firing that 12-gauge semi-automatic, um, or excuse me, it's a pump-action, gas-actuated semi-automatic shotgun. And again, this is an interesting weapon, tube extension. So you do 5 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 7 plus 1, or 8 plus 1 rounds for a tube magazine. So having that option, I think very similar to what we saw in Black Ops Cold War. I'm not a big shotgun guy. I'd really never use shotguns too much. But again, this is one of those weapons. If you're going to put these semi-automatic and fully automatic shotguns in the game, they need to be balanced correctly. I think having the spread and damage drop off at range is important. But obviously, right up close within 5 meters, they should destroy. So... Let me know what you guys think of those shotgun choices. Next up, we're going to move on to pistols. So those are all my shotgun choices. If I miss something, which I'm sure I probably missed some, some interesting options, but having a lot of semi-automatic weapons or shotguns and fully automatic shotguns there, I don't think you can have too many shotguns in the game because they're easy to abuse and probably the most hard to balance weapon in FPS games. But So we'll move on to pistols. And now some pistols here I mentioned in the submachine gun um, video that some pistols should almost be classified as submachine guns or based on the point system they would cost so many points that you wouldn't be able to fully deck out your primary weapon and would definitely need to give up a few perks based on how I described that system in part one so if we jump into this we'll have a few of those examples here so first off we're gonna jump to the Glock 25 so the Glock 25 we have seen a lot of Glocks in Call of Duty history especially in Modern Warfare 2019 Glock 25 is one of those weapons or the pistols firing the 380 ACP round and this was introduced back in 1995 so a lot of Glocks very similar looking design however you have a bunch of different calibers for the different Glock lines and the Glock 25 would be one of those that fires the 380 ACP with a 15 round magazine plus the one in the chamber um, very nice looking gun and again having this thing being able to be uh, decked out with suppressors, lasers, sights, things like that would be a given. Next up is one of those weapons that obviously would be one of the ones that I think would need to cost a lot of points, and that would be the Glock 18. So the Glock 18C, more specifically, this would be fully automatic pistol. We saw this in the original Modern Warfare 2, and believe it or not, you could dual wield these. So hopefully, I don't think we need to have it to the point where we are dual wielding these, but Glock 18C... Again, a really nice weapon. This is one of the one of the Glock lines firing the 9x19 Parabellum. So you could start with a Glock 17 with a conversion uh, with a conversion to the fully automatic Glock 18. So uh, let me know what you guys think of that Glock 18C. I think is a nice sidearm to have in the game. However, it would have to cost a decent amount of points. That way, it's equally balanced. So there's a trade-off if you're going to have a good sidearm versus decking out your primary and having all your perks. That's a decision you have to make as a player. Next up, we're going to go with the Beretta M9. This is an American pistol, again, firing 9x19 Parabellum, so another 9x19 Parabellum pistol. However, the caveat with this one would be that we would have the conversion, again, very similar to what we saw in Modern Warfare 2019. I think they did a good job with this, 
is the conversion to the M93R or the Rafika. Obviously, it's a different weapon. However, um, it does fit for a conversion. I think that would be a good idea. Or have a Rafika converted to a Beretta 9mm. So let me know what you guys think of that conversion. Or you could have two separate weapons there. I originally wrote out my list with a Beretta M9 and an M93R or the Rafika as two separate weapons. And I think that could definitely be the case. However, the Rafika, whether it's a base pistol or a conversion from the M9, that's one of those ones similar to the Glock 18C. We need to cost a decent amount of points in order to properly balance it as far as how you're going to use it and put it in your class. Next up is going to be the Vickers 1911. So again, this is just a Colt 1911, a little bit more modernized. We've seen this in every single Call of Duty game to date, almost every single modern FPS game to date and older FPS games. So the M1911, Colt M1911, in this case, a Vickers M1911 is a more, little bit more modernized. We saw this. Um, again, I'm, I'm mainly referencing Medal of Honor Warfighter. I remember seeing this specifically the Vickers 1911. Really nice gun. Again, nothing new here. You have it in all the same attachments. Same weapon we've seen a million times over. However, it's definitely has is a staple for Call of Duty franchise. Next up would be the MP433 or the 443 Garach. This is a Russian pistol firing the 9x19 Parabellum round or the 9x19 7N21 round. Again, really nice looking pistol. This is one of those Russian pistols that has been in a lot of FPS games to date. So having that as a returning pistol would be good to see. I always remember using this mainly in the Battlefield Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 games. After that, we'll move on to a Sig Sauer P226. This is a pistol firing the 9x19 Parabellum, also capable of taking different rounds like a 9x21, a 7.65, 357, 40 Smith & Weston, and a 22 Long Rifle. So we could also potentially have a conversion here to for the 22 LR to the Sig P322, which is essentially a very similar pistol, but that firing primarily the, the 22. LR. So you could have a conversion with that out of the PP or the P226 here from Sig Sauer. Again, a nice looking pistol, very reliable pistol. Be good to see this make a return into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Next up, we're going to be covering the Mark 23 Mod Zero. This is from HK Mark 23 Mod Zero. I believe we've seen this in previous Call of Duty games. I want to say it was uh, previously named the USP 45, I think. I could be wrong there. But this is a pistol firing the 45 ACP cartridge. Again, Agent K design. It was uh, adopted by US SOCOM as the Mark 23. Really beautiful looking pistol. Very aesthetically pleasing, especially when it's decked out with the lasers and suppressors. So this is one that I would definitely like to see make a return to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And next up is going to be the STX 357 Magnum, also known as the Super Sport STX. 357 Magnum, nicknamed the Nighthawk. So this is a really uh, elaborate looking pistol. It's a 357 Magnum with a bunch of rail systems on it. It looks really, really nice. This is something I think would to switch it up. We typically have the the old mundane 357 Magnum. This is a, a nice, more modernized looking uh, 357 Magnum, like I said, with Picatinny rails on the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions of the pistol. And again, it's a 357 Magnum, so it would pack quite the punch, and you could mount optics on there easily, as well as lasers, things like that, and even grips. So let me know what you guys think of that. That is our list for the shotguns and the pistols for part five here of the Modern Warfare 2 weapon wishlist. Next time, like I said, we'll probably pick up with launchers and some miscellaneous weapons that I may have missed along the way, or we might just jump right into the operator video where I'll go through different factions, milsim operators, things like that, that we could see introduced over the two years of support. Because it is two years of support, there's a lot of these uh, possibilities, I would say, that mainly we would say probably wouldn't have been ideal or something that was possible in the previous Call of Duty games, but now they have two years of support to fill. Depends on how much content they're gonna recycle and how much new content we'll see. So let me know what you guys think down below, especially because then we're not going to see a Call of Duty every year. We'll see two years of support here, and then hopefully that dev team would roll off at that point and start development on whatever game is next. We'd have a we'd have the uh, Treyarch title, and then maybe a Sledgehammer tri title, and probably not see another Infinity Ward title for another four to six years. So let me know what you guys think about that down below. Till next time, this is Buckner Gaming with part five of the Weapon Wishlist for Modern Warfare 2 for 2022.
Till next time, Buffer Gaming, out.